Hello everyone and welcome to the Upper Black Rock Spire Gold Challenge Mode Guide. Um, I'm your host, Baby Jace, and we'll get started. First you're going to want to take the pack right ahead of you and bring them into the room on the left. You should have a range member pulling the room on the right, so that the room on the right will join you in the room on the left. Uh, tank them in the corner, they do cleave, so you don't want to cleave on your raiders. Um, that would be really bad, you'd probably kill them. The only thing to really note uh, as a player in this pack is there's going to be a Black Iron Warcaster and it's going to be casting something called Shrapnel Storm on you. It's a purple arcane explosion looking ability. Um, this ability will one shot or get you pretty close to being dead um, if you get hit by it. So you just need to run outside of it and you probably will be fine. Um, yes, the slag belchers or iron belchers, they'll uh, go to sentry cannons and activate them. You just want to try to prevent that if you can. If you can't, it's not a big deal if you have one cannon, um, but if you get too many cannons, that could be a big problem. Once you've killed all those, you're going to want to pull the patrol. Um, you're going to want to get them a little lower first before you pull anything else because the wargs do a cleave that does massive amounts of damage. And we found that would be most that most of the time that was what was killing me on our uh, attempts before. But uh, once you go ahead and get them lower, you can go ahead and pull the room that you see um, on the screen, and you can pull the room next to that. And then you can also pull the final room, go into this final room, into the corner, and tank them there as well. Um, if you're a Death Knight, this is where you're going to want to use Army of the Dead, as this pack does a massive amount of damage. If you're not a death knight, you're going to need to chain your cooldowns effectively with your healer to not die. Again, there is iron warcasters here, so do not get hit by shrapnel storm as our uh, lock did here. Um, as you can see, it does kill you pretty damn fast, so you just need to not uh, avoid that. If you do die, just release, run in, you start right at the uh, very start of the instance. Um, you can try to kite away from them if you feel like as a tank you are about to die, but be, uh, note that the sentry cannons will kill you pretty fast, so try to stay in that room. As you see here, I died and I released and I'm just running back now. Um, so did our rogues. So the room, if you're in the room, you won't get hit by sentry cannons, but once you leave the room, the sentry cannons will start targeting you. Um, once this pack is defeated, we found the best way to deal with these sentry cannons was to not destroy them if there was more than one, but rather you're going to want to just run outside of the instance if you don't have a way to drop combat. So if you don't have a Feign Death or a Banish from a Rogue or a Greater Invis from a Mage, you're just going to want to run out of the instance and then run back inside the instance. This will make all of the sentry cannons that were activated neutral to you and no longer hostile. Uh, which is very helpful uh, because they have a lot of health. I think it's like 1.1 to 1.5 million each, which is way too much health to deal with. It's just far faster to run out and run in. But once you are doing that, if you have a hunter who is able to drop stealth or uh, drop combat or a rogue that could drop combat, you're going to want to go ahead and go to the next pull and pull those mobs. Now, these mobs don't do anything massive. And they don't really have too much health, but they do hit hard if you face tank them. So you're going to want to use stuff like deterrence or evasion to just tank them and activate the uh, iron traps that are stopping the boss from activating. You're going to want to activate those so you can pull the boss immediately. Um, but we kind of waited here to activate the boss because we weren't sure if people were ready, but you want to you want to make sure that you are activating the boss right away. Uh, for this boss, he does the exact same thing he does on Heroic, except uh, the lightning storms that are going around do a lot more damage. The way we found to make this boss a little easier is you're going to want to set up who goes where uh, right off the bat. For example, as a tank, I was getting the two in the back, um, right behind where the ramp is for the most part, and that made it a lot easier for everyone, uh, for me especially, since I don't really have a quick way to get back up top. Um, wa the Warlock could be getting like the back two and the or the 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 back left ones the middle left and the back left one and then like uh, the hunter could be getting like the back right one and the middle right one and if, if they do have to go out there they can just use their like uh, warlock teleport ability to get back up a rogue can shadow step back up hunter can disengage back up so you have a bunch of options to, if you need to get back up onto the platform um, you, you want to make sure you take full advantage of things like that. You never want your healer to go out because 
the damage that these lightning things do is a lot of damage and you want them to just be chain healing on you so you don't die. Um, other than that, this boss is pretty simple. Uh, it shouldn't really take you too many attempts to get it down. Um, again, no real difference from its heroic and counterpart. And uh, it went down for us on our very first attempt, so... The thing to note is, you might want to use less than that boss. Uh, you can use less than that boss or on the trash before that boss. I think it's better to use on the trash, but uh, we forgot to use it on the trash. Uh, anyways, on this pull, you're going to want to be focusing down the Alchemist. What the Alchemist does, he will put a he healing dot, or hot, on um, whoever has the lowest health. And it's usually going to be the Alchemist, since you are killing the Alchemist. The only other thing to note in this pack is the uh, Monstrosity does a Fire Cleave. If you get hit by this, it'll disorient you, and he will go to other players and start hitting on them. Just don't get hit. And... Um, the engineers, they'll just cast Debilitating Ray. You just want to kick that. It makes you go slower, it makes you take a dot, and you do less damage. So once you've killed the Alchemist and you get the other two a little bit lower, you can go ahead and pull the next pack. Again, focusing the Alchemist, that is your top priority. If it does get a heal off, which it, you can't really stop it outside of like a stun on the cast, um, you're going to want to go ahead and purge the heal off them. So things like Purge, Trank Shot, Glyph Icy Touch, uh, mass Dispel, things like that, you need to purge it. Um, if you have no purges in your group, uh, you need to figure out how to get, kill them, uh, chain stunning them, or you, you need to get a purge, unfortunately. It's just uh, how it is. But uh, once you kill these uh, two packs, you're going to want to go ahead and pull the boss. Um, you're going to want to focus your DPS uh, cleaving off of the small monstrosities. Uh, once the boss goes into phase 2 where he gets the poison and starts spewing out poison, they also get this ability. So it, it's just too much poison being thrown around and you're gonna run out of space to tank uh, very fast. So you just want to go ahead and kill the small monstrosities first before you kill the, the boss. The boss does the same thing as he did on Heroic. He casts the uh, debilitating fixation which you must kick or else he'll go to a uh, party member and beat on them instead of you, which is bad. The two smaller adds will do their cleave again. Don't get hit by this. You'll probably take a lot of damage if you get hit by that. And uh, the boss does occasionally put the healing uh, buff on himself. You need to purge that again. This does a lot of healing, so the faster you purge this, the better. And then he also spawns the poison pools all around you, which do a lot of damage. So you just need to... Um, you just need to slowly make your way towards where you need to go next so that um, when you do kill him you don't really have to do too much running. But other than that, this boss is pretty simple. He does all the same things he does on Heroic. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention on this boss is you may actually want to use Lust on this boss instead. Um, and that's a viable use of your Lust, since you'll have it, you'll still have it up for the very last boss. Um, as this boss does have a lot of health, and uh, it's generally just kind of annoying. But, um, so you can use Lust on this fight. Once the boss is dead though, you're going to want to make your way up the ramp, and uh, past the first door, you're going to want to go to the second door. And uh, you're going to pull the pack um, that's right next to where you uh, go up the hallway. So you'll see here, you're going to go up the ramp and there's that pack right there. We're going to pull that and you could, should pull the patrolling ogre only if the ogre will not pull the rest of the mob. See, I had no idea here where the ogre was and I eventually saw that he was right next to mob. So I can't pull the ogre yet or it'll pull them. And you don't want to pull multiple packs of these as they do a charge on random players and it'll kill them. And you need to kill these pretty fast as they do a lot of damage. However, note there is three veterans and one elite. The veterans will just do shield smash. You can run away from that, won't do damage. The elite, however, will do uh, a fear. He'll charge and do a fear, so you want to kick this fear. Um, the fear is going to be pretty nasty if it uh, fears your tank. But uh, once you've killed this pack, you can go ahead and pull the Patrolling Ogre and the Patrolling Warlock, the Dread Reaver. You need to get the Warlock as well, since the Warlock is part of mob count. 
And for the uh, for the warlock and the ogre, just make sure you kick Shadow Bolt Volley. That is the thing you need to uh, interrupt. Um, it's very important you interrupt Shadow Bolt Volley, as we wiped a few times just that ability. Um, outside of that, just focus your DPS on the ogre. He does a frontal cleave, just sidestep out of it, it's not really a big deal. And once you've killed both of these, you're going to want to invis past the two ogres and the patrolling ogres on the right side. Since we have a rogue, we didn't have to use our invisibility potion. But uh, if you don't have a rogue, you're going to want to use invisibility potions as you, those three ogres that we're bypassing are completely unnecessary for mob count and will only waste your time. Once you get to the top of the stairs, go ahead and pull all these mobs. Again, the um, make sure you don't let the summoner get its summon off. Make sure you interrupt Shadow Bolt Volley and just sidestep out of the veteran shield smash. This is a ver fairly easy pack to uh, deal with. However, note, if you do pull the patrolling ogre with this pack, it's not the end of the world, it won't wipe you, it just means you have to deal more damage and your healer has to heal more. Uh, that's about it. It's not really a cause for wipe, so don't go ahead and wipe it like right off the bat if you uh, do get that patrolling ogre. Once uh, you're on this boss, your tank or whoever has an AoE ability wants to go right up to the gate and use it to pull these mobs early. You don't want to wait for the RP to release them, that takes way too long. So you just want to pull these right off the bat and you can stun them at the start. Uh, what they'll do is when the gate opens, they uh, they will forcibly go to like the middle and reset their aggro. So you want to make sure you, you're there and you blood, you know, you blood boil, you use some form of AoE threat to uh, get them. As you can see, they spawn again and I'm going to go and I'm going to blood boil them and pull them so that we can do this faster. So uh, you, you definitely want to do that. If frost traps work, uh, blood boil works. I, I, th I would think um, other AOE abilities would work. Uh, a monk's ability, a uh, spinning crane kick would probably work. So, so things like that. Again, don't let Shadow Bolt Volley go off. And don't stand in the wolf cleaves if there are wolves in the, in the pack that you're doing. In this pack, there is going to be two summoners and uh, more Shadow Bolt Volleys. Don't let Shadow Bolt Volley get off. And definitely do not let the summons get off. Um, it's just unnecessary damage that you're going to have to deal to um, kill whatever it, it does summon. So definitely you're going to want to interrupt the summoners. Uh, as you're going to see here, we're going to interrupt the summoner. And the debilitating ray, if you can interrupt that, you're going to want to interrupt that too. There's a lot of things you need to interrupt, so AoE stuns are always uh, very nice in challenge modes. Once you've killed this trash, the uh, the drake will spawn inside the cage. Uh, you'll be out of combat here, and you'll stay out of combat as long as you stay away from the drake. So if you need to eat it since you died or change specs, this is the time to do it. Uh, we thought you would get into combat if you hit the mob, not when uh, it got near you. So our hunter was trying to swap to marksman, and it didn't work out too well. Uh, he blames me for that. But this boss is pretty simple. The, the Rylock will do a frontal breath. Uh, on someone, so just don't stand in that. Uh, you want to kill the uh, once the Rylock and the the guy is off the Rylock. You just want to focus your attention on the uh, the boss, not so much the Rylock. He doesn't really do too much as uh, we figured out, so you don't really want to focus like on it like we did. Just focus on the boss. The boss is the deadly one here. He will throw an imbued iron axe on range, and these these really like to go towards you and chase you around. We don't really know what, what they do, if they go around in a set pattern, or if they are supposed to follow you. We found that they were following us for the most part, and they were really annoying. Another ability he does is a charge on a range member. You just gotta really deal with that. I think if you're running at the same time that he's doing it, you can avoid the damage from that charge. Uh, if you're melee, note, however, that he does do a cleave. He'll turn around and smack you. Uh, it's pretty freaking annoying, so um, just... You just kind of have to deal with that as well if you're the healer. The hardest part of this fight is he will keep throwing the imbued fire axes and these start to become a very big annoyance for your tank and for your melee as you have to continuously be running around trying to dodge these. 
But other than that, it's a simple fight. He no longer summons adds. He no longer summons the little mini Rylocks. Um, it's just the boss, so just go ahead and kill the boss. Uh, you'll get it eventually. It's not too hard of a boss. Just don't stand in the burning, uh, spinning blades, and you'll be fine. Once this boss is dead, go ahead, go through the doorway and up the hallway, and you're going to see a ogre pack, like one ogre and a few mobs. You're going to want to focus all your attention on the ogre. It does an AoE melee fear, so if you're ranged, you want to make sure you are staying away from it because you don't want to get feared unnecessarily, and you're going to want to focus all your damage on it, not really too much on the other mobs, just cleave off of the ogre. Don't stand in his uh, frontal hammer smash. That's uh, really bad. It does a lot of damage. So uh, as you can see, there's the fear. If you have a priest, you can use um, uh, fear ward. If you're a DK, you can use lichborn or desecrated ground. I just felt as a death knight that AOE grip and uh, purgatory were much better options than those, and you just eat the fear. For this next pack, you're going to want to pull them all again with the ogre. Focus your attention on the ogre that fears. He's going to be the bigger one. Once they uh, attempt to go towards the traps, you're going to want to stun them and prevent them from going there. It's not too big of a deal if they open up one of these small traps. The trap that you really don't want them to open is the big one. The small ones do almost no damage and they die very fast. It's the big one that you have to worry about. The big one has a lot of health and he does a lot of damage and he's very annoying. So you just want to go ahead and stop the middle one or the big drake from opening at all costs. The small one's not too big of a deal. But uh, once you've killed the ogre that does the fear, you're going to want to go ahead and pull the next two ogres. Um, even if you still have trash remaining, you want to go ahead and pull these ogres to save time. Uh, mark one of the ogres so you can focus it down and kill it as soon as you can because you want to make sure there's not two ogres fearing you at this time. Um, because you have a higher chance of dying. Luckily for me that they both use their fear at the same time, but they can sometimes stagger their fear, and that is a lot of damage that you're losing, and probably a lot of damage that you're going to take from their smash. Once you've killed one ogre, the other ogre will die pretty fast, and then uh, you'll just go straight to the third boss. This boss is uh, pretty simple. Our hunter was just going marksman there, that's why we were delaying it. But um, this boss is pretty simple. If you have a warlock, you want to set up a warlock gateway from the left to the right room to make it easier on your range, as his breath uh, does a lot of damage. He'll probably kill you. But uh, go ahead. This boss has the exact same mechanics as it does on heroic. It just does a lot more damage. The fire, engulfing fire, does a lot more damage. The fire patches that he leaves on the ground does more damage. And he just has more health in general, so uh, this is the exact same fight, it's not hard at all. Just run all the way to the right side if he does it on, from the left to the right, or go all the way to the left side if he does it from the right to the left. Uh, you just you do not want to get hit by that breath at all costs. Go ahead and just AoE all these mobs down, group them up, uh, burn them down. They don't really do too much, they don't really have too much health. Uh, for the most part they'll be dead before the dragon comes back or they'll be close to dying before the dragon comes back and you just repeat the first phase um, until you get him down to 40% he just does a bleed on your tank he does the breath from one side of the room to the other and he does fire patches that's uh, that's about it as you can see there I got hit by the disorient and it does a lot of damage and you will probably die if you do get hit by that so try your best not to get hit. I thought I was out of range, and I was not. It's a it's a little bit larger range than you think it's going to be, so uh, just go a little farther to the left or the right. Um, you don't need to risk it. It's not worth it. Adds will come down again. Just group them up, burn them down. They're not really too big of a deal. When the dragon boss comes back this time, she will go onto the platform and start meleeing your tank on the platform. Uh, Pretty much the only thing you have to note here is that she has a stacking enrage, and if you if your tank can't handle it, like here we didn't need to disenrage her, 
But if your tank can't handle it, you're going to want to go ahead and um, use a Druid Ability Soothe or Trink Shot or a Shiv, I believe, gets rid of it. Maybe not Shiv, but a Rogue has an ability that can get rid of it. I don't know the exact name of it right now. But uh, once this mob uh, boss dies, you're going to go ahead into the next room. You're going to skip the entire next pack with uh, Invis Pots, or you can use your Rogue uh, AoE Stealth if you have that. However, note. Your tank is going to have a bleed on him, so you're going to want to wait for this bleed to uh, fall off before you start invising, or you, you will be broken out of invis immediately. So we're here, we're just waiting for the, the bleed to drop, and the bleed did drop, so we're just going to use our rogue's AoE stealth ability. Now if you're going to use AoE stealth, you need to go in between the patrol and the pack. Careful not to pull them, this is not an invis, so if you go and run through them, they will pull. And uh, you're going to want to jump over that, that uh, brick that you saw there. But um, once you've gotten past all those, you need to kill these two mobs for mob count. They just do a shockwave, focus one of them. Uh, they do a shockwave, frontal shockwave, and you just need to not stand inside that. I obviously was standing inside that, it didn't look like I was, but um, I apparently was. So just make sure you don't get hit by that, as two back-to-back -back shockwaves will probably kill your tank. So just don't stand in that, and don't face it towards your other party members. Once you've killed both of these though, you're going to use your uh, all your cooldowns, your potion, you, make sure you pre-pot your lust, everything on the last boss, uh, Warlord Zayla. She's a pretty, um, a lot of, she's kind of hard, kind of easy, it depends. Like, at first she's hard, but once you get the pattern and how the fight works, it's uh, pretty easy. But uh, you're going to want to go ahead and pre-pot, lust, use every single cooldown you have on her right here. And uh, she just does the same things as she does on Heroic. She does her Blade Storm on a random player. She doesn't knock back anymore, however. I noticed this. Every attempt that I've ever done on this boss on challenge mode, she does not knock your tank back. So you don't have to worry about positioning and getting knocked off of the platform. It's not a problem anymore. Once these adds come out, you're going to want to burn them down pretty fast. Focus one of them to kill, and then you can AoE cleave the rest of them. The major change on challenge mode on this fight is that you will have to deal with two drakes breathing fire more often. As instead of uh, the second drake coming in towards the end of the first drake's cast, it seems to come in halfway through the first drake's cast. So you always have to be on the watch out for when the drakes come back in. And that is the major difficulty of this fight. And uh, once, after a certain amount of time, Warlord Zayla will come back down and she does the exact same ability she did before. You just need to be careful that you don't get hit by the two fires going out while you are damaging her. Uh, B, note, however, she still does the Cyclone. Try not to be stacked for that. And um, it does a lot of damage, especially if it's hitting like three party members. It's going to be hard for your tank to recover uh, or your healer to recover. Just again, don't get hit by the fire breath. Our healer there got hit by the fire breath, and so did our rogue. And that killed both of them. But thankfully, since I have a B-Res, I could B-Res the Druid, and the Druid could B-Res the Rogue. So uh, if you even if you do die, it's not the end of the world if you have battle res and stuff like that. Um, once you've once you've gotten the pulls down of this instance, a gold should be pretty easy to get. Um, we found the hardest pull of the entire instance, or the hardest part was the very first pull. But uh, hopefully, once the boss dies, you'll get your gold medal. If not, run it again, practice a few of the pulls. Maybe you can chain pull a little more. Uh, there's a bunch of things that you can do to uh, make this place easier. And uh, if this helped you get gold, uh, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any comments, go ahead and leave a comment. Maybe uh, if you want something to be noted, if I forgot something, left something out, just go ahead and leave a comment. And uh, if you want to look at any of the other challenge mode guides, you should see them right in front of you. You go ahead and just click those and it'll redirect you to those videos. And uh, that's all for now. Uh, have a good day.